Crew-1 is a massive step in the future of exploration and beyond. It's no secret that the United States have lacked the capability of sending astronauts to U.S. soil for nine years until the success of the DM-2 mission earlier this year that sent Bob and Doug to the International Space Station. Crew-1 is the true demonstration of what developing private crew vehicles can look to be in the future, and it is outfitted with four crew members that resemble what to expect on future NASA missions. They'll be flying on board Dragon Ship Resilience for her maiden voyage. For a mission that is expected to last at least 180 days, the crew will join Expedition 64, made up of Commander Sergei Risikov and Flight Engineers Sergei Kudzerikov and NASA astronaut Kate Rubens. The arrival of Crew-1 will increase the regular crew size of the space station's expedition missions from six to seven astronauts, adding significantly to the crew time available for research. In this video, I'll be introducing you to each member of this diverse crew and then letting them tell you more about themselves. This video is brought to you by NordPass. We'll start out with the person sitting in the middle left chair, the crew commander, Colonel Michael Hopkins. Hopkins is in his 11th year in the astronaut corps, and this is his second flight to space. He previously flew on Soyuz in 2013. He's an experienced Air Force test pilot flying in both C-17s and C-130s. He'll also be sworn into the Space Force while on board station, thus becoming the first member of the Space Force to serve in the astronaut corps. Here's Michael. So my role on the Crew Dragon itself as part of Crew One is the commander of the vehicle. So essentially from all of this training that we've been going through, launch, rendezvous, docking with the space station on the commander of that particular vehicle. When we get on a space station, I just become another member of the ISS crew. Uh, at that point, I'll be doing all of the standard roles that uh, you would expect any crew member that's on ISS to perform. While I'm there, though, the whole time, I am still responsible for the Crew-1 vehicle and making sure that it's always ready to bring us home if we have to. At the end of our mission, our stay on ISS, I'll command the vehicle and bring us back home and, and land. So ever since we were assigned as Crew-1, we've been going out to SpaceX at their headquarters in Hawthorne. They bring a lot to the table. NASA brings a lot to the table. We've got a ton of experience in human spaceflight. They are very innovative. They think about things in a different way. And so when you bring those strengths together, uh, a lot of their innovation and a lot of our experience with the human spaceflight, and you bring those together, it, it's been an amazing team. One of the things that I've really enjoyed uh, about this uh, relationship with SpaceX is we get to go on the floor and, and we get to meet the guy that's uh, uh, building or that is uh, welding together your spacecraft. And, and I think that's good for both of us, right? Because we, we get to meet him, we get to see the work that he's doing and understand how critical that work is for our safety and for the success of the mission. He gets to meet us and, and we get to share thoughts and stories and all of that. And so just that personal connection has been such a powerful thing for this program and it's really play, paid uh, huge dividends. Every vehicle typically has a patch made that represents that crew, that represents that vehicle. And so this is our, our Crew-1 patch. And so this is for the space, NASA SpaceX Crew Dragon vehicle. And you'll notice a lot of times you'll have names of the crew members that are on this patch, but we, we elected not to have our names on it. And part of that is because it's not just about the astronauts that are on board, but it's about the entire team at NASA and SpaceX that it's taken to launch this Crew-1 vehicle. The other thing I'd like to point out on, and it's hard to see, and I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it in the, in the camera view, but along the bottom there are the symbols for all of the previous uh, US launch vehicles. So Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, Space Shuttle, and that's flowing into the the SpaceX NASA Crew Dragon, and, and then all of that going up to the International Space Station. So very excited about our patch, uh, the Crew-1 patch, and uh, it was a lot of fun to help design it, and uh, it's even more fun now to be able to wear it. Sitting in the middle right seat is the pilot, Commander Victor Glover. Glover is in his seventh year in the astronaut corps, and this will be his first flight to space. As a US Navy test pilot, he's accumulated 3,000 flight overs and more than 40 aircraft, primarily the F-18 Hornet. He'll be the first African-American astronaut to stay on a long duration mission to the ISS. Here's Victor. My role on the Crew-1 mission is to first safely get us to the space station. We uh, are flying a new spacecraft. And once we get to the space station, as a member of, uh, of the expedition, we'll be conducting research, lots of scientific experiments, some of them ongoing, some of them that we'll bring up with us, and also to do spacewalks, robotic operations, outreach events, and the maintenance and upkeep of, of our International Space Station. Crew-1 
is the designator for the first operational mission of the SpaceX Crew Dragon. We'll also be a part of the expedition on the International Space Station. It's a great honor, first and foremost. And looking at all their experience, it makes me one, comfortable that there's so much experience and so many ways that I can learn from them. But also it motivates me to be ready uh, and able to do my job and to take care of my responsibilities. I know that I can ask them a question and they'll be able to help me learn or do anything that we need to do on the station. <laughs> we are getting ready to fly a new spacecraft to the International Space Station for six months. And that is a mouthful. It may sound like, hey, yeah, it's a nice sound bite, but it took so much. We've been working with our partner SpaceX for years to develop this spacecraft and the capability to fly it and operate it safely. We've been running the space station for two decades, keeping it uh, habitable and keeping it running, improving the capability to do science there. It requires upkeep, it's not brand new. And so to be able to fly a new spacecraft to our home of almost two decades in low Earth orbit is just an amazing accomplishment. And we are the next wave. Flying this spaceship is one piece and two very important phases that'll be separated by six months. But in between, there's also the very important mission of being on the International Space Station. We will conduct spacewalks to upgrade and keep the space station flying and healthy. We will do maintenance inside to keep the space station running. We will use that orbiting laboratory to conduct science or really to do the hands-on part of the science experiments that happen on space station in conjunction with our principal investigators on the ground. Training for your first mission, there's the basic competencies like flying the high performance jet flying that we do, fly, the NBL training, the diving in the full pressure suit, the space suit to train for spacewalks, robotics training, International Space Station systems, specifically the emergency procedures training that really ramps up. Uh, and then there's a bunch of science and payloads of which sometimes we are the principal thing that's being investigated. Also our foreign language training. I'm still taking Russian classes to understand the language and culture of my Russian cosmonaut colleagues. But then there's also this really interesting slice of learning to fly the Crew Dragon. And so we actually travel out to SpaceX and Hawthorne and they have a training team that's helping us to learn the systems and operations and again, emergency procedures that you need to know to safely fly the Crew Dragon into space. This is a test pilot's dream to, to be able to in any way contribute to NASA developing a new spacecraft or a, a one of our partners developing a, a new spacecraft. And so. It's, been, it's just been amazing to work with them and help to, to improve procedures and training, to learn about the vehicle. When I first started going out to SpaceX, when you walk in the front door, there's a conference room right off to the side. And it's really interesting because there are usually 40 laptops in there open, and there may only be like 20 people. There are more computers in there than people. You can always tell the NASA folks from the SpaceX folks. Essentially, anyone not wearing a t-shirt is NASA. And all the folks in t-shirts are, are the SpaceX folks. So there's definitely a culture difference. And that's where I would say the most interesting dynamics have happened. We have learned a lot from them. They have learned a lot from us. And learning to fly this vehicle, not just inside in a tactical operational sense, but in a big picture organizational culture sense. And I would say that it's creating sort of a new culture that is some kind of a balance between the two. And they have made us better. And I think we have made them better. My overriding thought when I envision us getting to that point is don't screw up. We have responsibilities, things that we're watching, and then some things that we will be doing, interacting with the vehicle and making sure that, that we understand the, what the vehicle's doing, what it's expected to do and what it's actually doing. There are windows that would be down near our feet. I and mean, so our screens are up high. And I just envision at some point being able to like take a look down and to see the earth from a perspective that I've never seen. That'll be a little special moment. In the far left seat, we have Mission Specialist 1, Soishi Noguchi. He is the most seasoned space flyer on this mission. He's been a Japanese astronaut for 24 years and has spent nearly six months in space. He is in a very rare club. The Crew Dragon will be the third different vehicle he's flown into space. Prior to Dragon Ship Resilience, he flew on Space Shuttle Discovery for STS-114 and a Soyuz for TMA-17. Here's Soishi. Well, my mission will be uh, uh, help support uh, commander and the pilot on the spacecraft uh, Crew Dragon. And of course, once I arrive on the space station, I'll be a border engineer and do lots of science and maintenance and uh, spacewalks, robotics, all kinds of work. I'm really fortunate enough to have good crew member. Hopper is our commander. He's a really natural leader. He's really thoughtful and caring and really fortunate to have a great commander like him. Ike, I would say he's the best rookie ever. I don't know any other rookie astronaut who is 
really capable and knowledgeable and, and fun guy as well. Shannon Walker, we spent a long time together. We're in the same age. I really respect her on her knowledge. Uh, she's really a ISS guru. And for me, it's more like a running mate because uh, we spe specialists, uh, mission specialist. I'm a mission specialist one and she's mission specialist two. And together we can share the knowledge and kind of back up each other to accomplish a big a mission goal. I was fortunate enough to fly uh, two different vehicles so far, a space shuttle and uh, Russian Soyuz. And this new SpaceX is obviously uh, launched like capsule. This is more like a Soyuz. And the docking sequences is quite resembling to the space shuttle. And uh, landing is totally new. It's uh, we're gonna be uh, splashing down into the ocean, just like Apollo. The shuttle training here in Houston and the Soyuz training in Star City, Russia, totally different approach. I personally like the way that NASA trained me for, on the first flight. Uh, the Russian side, they, they trained me from the scratch to start from the theoretical part to kind of build up to the operational skills. While space shuttle, you learn through the simulation and learn from the other crew member. So it's a totally different approach. And uh, SpaceX has its own way, but each different method eventually uh, make us good astronaut who can operate the system safely. Because ultimate goal is to return the vehicle with the same number of uh, people go up and they come back safely. So it's all the same. Uh, this is brand new design from scratch, 21st century spacecraft. So I have a knowledge of a space shuttle and the Soyuz, but I don't want to stick to those old experience. We are learning a new system and this is a new design. And obviously the SpaceX did a very nice job designing a new spacecraft. I think this SpaceX training, obviously this is new, uh, so uh, I would say it's more like a half development uh, support and half training. So unlike uh, space shuttle program or Soyuz, which have a long history of a safe uh, flight, I kind of learned from the previous uh, crew member. The 2005, uh, our main way of communication was uh, is a fax actually. And then we just started to have some very limited email. On the second flight, however, uh, we have internet on board. We can do the tweet, we can do the video conferencing. And uh, now we have almost uh, a 24 seven uh, email access plus uh, video conferencing capability on their cell phone as well. So it's much closer in this uh, digital age. So it should be, should be a fun stay. The changes from a space shuttle to SpaceX is big. It's almost feel like the very old telephone booth to the smartphone. Many people say, especially the, the returning crew, they feel like uh, they never missed a date on space station, meaning they, on the day one of the returning flight, they feel like they were on the station yesterday as well, meaning you quickly go back to the old habits uh, of going back to the zero gravity life and the stuff from there. The spacecraft of this century is not just for America, but this is international corporation and all the other people around the world have a chance to ride on this crew dragon. So this is a new era. Finally, we have in the right seat, mission specialist number two, Shannon Walker. Walker is the resident scientist on board, who also found out last month's the crew that she'll be joining them on this mission. She's been in the NASA astronaut corps for the last 16 years and flew once prior on TMA-19 for a long duration stay on station. Here's Shannon. So my role for my upcoming flight is sort of broken into two pieces. There's my role on the Crew Dragon and there's my role on the International Space Station. On the Crew Dragon, I am one of the mission specialists. And so a lot of my job, I think, is to help people understand how you operate on that spacecraft with four people as opposed to just two people and can get things done efficiently with four people in a small space. On the space station, my role is gonna be very much like it was last time. I do what the ground needs us to do, whether it's maintenance or experiments and just execute the task at hand. When I was there last time, I did a whole variety of tasks. It was at the very end of of the construction of the space station. So we did a lot of uh, maintenance and getting the station ready to do all the science that we're doing now. And so I think that's one of the main differences it's gonna be uh, between my last flight and this flight, it'll be more science, hopefully less maintenance. And before it was more maintenance, less science. 
what I have found being part of the International Space Station program and not just Russia, but our colleagues in Japan and Europe and Canada is that underneath it all, we all have the same goals and we all have the same passions and people are just driven to accomplish this joint goal that we have together. I was assigned quite late to this mission and so my training time has been much, much shorter than the rest of my crewmates. Anytime you get a flight assignment, it's, it's tremendously exciting. It is a big change. Um, my ground duty uh, within the astronaut office was being as part of the leadership team in the astronaut office. So I was more of a management type. And then all of a sudden, Friday I was a manager, Monday I was a crew in training. And so it's a huge shift in how your day goes. Well, there are a few differences in training between training on the Soyuz flight and training for the Crew Dragon flight. One, on the Soyuz, I was trained as the pilot on that spacecraft. And so I had a lot more hands-on flying the spacecraft training. I'm not the pilot on this particular flight, so I do not have to train for those duties. My first flight, uh, the training flow was three years and now I'm getting about five months. And so I have a lot of experience to fall back on, but we've done very abbreviated training courses on something. So in, in many ways, my training days have been a lot longer and a lot more intense than my fellow crewmates are going through right now. SpaceX is a very interesting company. There are so many young people. I always imagine it to be like it was in the early Apollo days at NASA with so many young engineers so passionate about what they are doing. I'm looking forward to being on station, living and working there, and spending time with my crewmates on the station. You really get to know each other so much better than you have been able to on the ground. There are so many things that you could do on station. What I like about it is every day really is different. You get up and you do something different and you may be doing a biological experiment one day, you may be doing maintenance on equipment the next day, and then the day following that you'll be doing uh, some sort of experiment in chemistry. I have a lot of confidence in uh, the spacecraft Falcon 9 rocket as well as the Crew Dragon vehicle. The Falcon 9 in over its iterations has flown more than 80 times in space. And so it is a very solid rocket to fly on. Space exploration is important for a number of reasons. It is important for humanity in terms of the science and engineering benefits it brings. It is important for understanding the universe and our place in it. And I think it's important for the world to work, work together on common goals. Well, now you've heard from the crew themselves. I hope you learned something new from this video and I really want to thank NordPass for sponsoring it. If you're looking for a new reliable password manager, you can download it for free at nordpass.com slash I need more space. If you'd like to support this channel and continue to see more videos like this, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash I need more space. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new and I'll see y'all later. Bye.